Hello everyone, I'm Bo Lun from Beihang University and New York University. I'm very glad to give you this talk, Exact and Efficient Polyhedral Envelope Containment Check. This is an illustration of an input surface in 2D, and we want to remesh it. The red surface is a remeshing result. We can see that the remeshing result doesn't fit the input surface very well, so we don't want to accept the result like this. To avoid this problem, we can build an envelope around the input surface and check if the remeshing result is inside the envelope or not. So for this case, the red parts are outside of envelope, so we don't want to accept it. For the other case, the input surface uh, the remission result is inside the envelope. So we can say that this is a good approximation of the input surface. Envelope check is widely used in remission algorithms such like surface remission and volumetric remission. The most common envelope we use is a Hokkien envelope which is the space of all points whose output distance from a reference surface is less than epsilon. An envelope check is to check if a query is inside of an envelope or not. This is very easy to check a query point because we only need to calculate the distance between the point and the, and the reference surface. If the distance is less than epsilon, then this point is inside, otherwise it's outside. However, it's more challenging to check if a query triangle is inside of envelope. Because if a triangle is inside, it requires all the points of this triangle to be inside of envelope. So the most common way of doing this is sampling method, which means we need to sample the triangle and check point by point. If all the sampling points of this triangle are all inside of envelope, we can regard this triangle to be inside. However, sampling method is not exact. This is a case of a, a triangle outside of envelope. However, all the sampling points are inside. So the sampling method gives us the wrong answer of envelope check. This can cause the remission algorithms going into wrong branches, which can lead to problems like over refinement. We can see that the mesh in the circle is very dense. And also, if the envelope size is uh, if the envelope size shrinks, we need to sample the triangle denser and denser. It will require longer and longer running time. So we found it's very difficult to check Euclidean envelope. And actually, we only need to know if a triangle is close enough to the reference surface. It doesn't matter if the envelope size is if the envelope is Euclidean envelope or not. So instead of using Euclidean envelope, we propose to build a polyhedron envelope inside of Euclidean envelope and check if the query triangles are inside of a polyhedron envelope or not. We hope in this way we can avoid sampling and make our algorithm exact. One simple solution of doing this is Minkowski sum which means we can use a polyhedron to sweep the surface. In this way, we can generate an inner layer and outer layer of shell, and we can check if the query triangle is in between of them or not. We did experiment using DataFars library, Figo. We start with a very simple mesh and keep up sampling it to make the mesh denser and denser. And we can we record the 
on the construction time. We can see that when the number of phases is uh, 80,000, it takes over 8 hours just to construct the envelope. So this method is totally unpractical for the machine algorithms. Another simple solution is we can build an envelope and polyhedron for each of the triangles of the mesh. And we can calculate the union of the polyhedrons. In this way, we can also generate an inner layer and outer layer of mesh. And we can check if the queries triangles are in between of them or not. We also did experiments. We can see that when there are only hundreds of faces in this, uh, in this mesh, it requires hours just to construct the envelope. So this method is also unpractical. So instead of using this method, we propose to build a to build a a, a, pol, a collapsed polyhedron for each of the triangles of the mesh, and we directly check if the query triangle is inside of the polyhedron set or not. The first stage is convex polyhedron creation. We implicitly build one convex polyhedron, which contains seven or eight faces for each triangle. Implicitly, we mean uh, we don't really calculate the vertices of the polyhedron. Instead, we use one plane to present each faces of each, each, face, each face of the polyhedron to make sure the polyhedron is convex. If you want to know more detail, please read our paper. And uh, we make sure the distance between any point to the uh, reference surface is less than, uh, less than epsilon, which means our polyhedron is contained in Euclidean envelope. And the second stage is envelope check. So we have a query triangle T and the polyhedron set PS. We want to check if the triangle is inside of the envelope or not. We found that as long as three conditions are satisfied, the triangle will be inside of the polyhedron set. The first condition is three vertices of this triangle need to be inside of the polyhedron set. The second condition is the intersection points of uh, triangle edges and the polyhedral faces need to be inside of the envelope, uh, the polyhedral set. For this kind of point, we call it line plane intersection point. The third condition is the intersection points of the triangle and two faces of the polyhedral set need to be inside of the polyhedral set. We call this kind of points three plane intersection points. So the question is how to check if a point is inside of a correct polyhedron? The answer is we can check the orientation of this point against all the faces of this polyhedron, which means if this, if this point is on the same side of all the faces of the convex polyhedron, then this point is inside. For three vertices of the triangle, we can use own 3D function, which is very common in many geometry processing libraries. However, we are not just checking vertices, we are also checking an uh, intersection point. But solving an intersection point in floating point can be inaccurate. So we developed own 3D LPI. Uh, this algorithm can give us the exact orientation answer of an uh, intersection point between the line and the plane. 
Similarly, we develop own 3D TPI, which can give us the exact result of orientation of a three-plane intersection point. The contribution of developing this tool algorithm is we implicitly present the intersection points to avoid numerical problem and give the and it can give the exact orientation of the of intersection point. Do you remember in the beginning we talked about the own refinement caused by inexactness? Using our envelope, the problem disappeared completely. We also did large scale statistics to compare with other methods. We use the 10,000 models in Syngate K dataset as input meshes. For every model, we generate around 100,000 query triangles. We compare with sampling method and house stock bounded method. Under different envelope sizes, large, normal, and small. So this is our result. We can see that as envelope size changed, our method is very stable. However, for sampling method, when the envelope size shrinks, it takes longer and longer running time. Similar trend appears for Hausdorff bounded method, which are in blue bars. We also tested extremely small envelope. This is our method. We can see that for our method, it, uh, the, the result is really stable and takes almost constant time. However, for sampling method, it exploded very quickly. Cost of bounded method is similar, but uh, uh, it's a little better than sampling method. But when the envelope size is very small, it's still over 100 times slower than us. And sometimes it's not enough just to use one envelope size globally. So this is the case that uh, two spheres which are really close to each other, but uh, they are separated. If we use large envelope globally, we can see that the gap between the two spheres are merged. It's really straightforward and very easy for our algorithm to set smaller envelope where we want to preserve phases, and the larger envelope where far far away from the critical area. So we can have finer mesh to preserve the gap and have closer mesh where far away from the critical area. We call this adaptive envelope, which we believe is very useful in our algorithm. OK, let's talk about our limitation. The pink area is the Euclidean envelope of an input surface. Since we are using polyhedron to present envelope, our envelope is actually smaller than Euclidean envelope, which, me, which makes us conservative. And uh, since we are all, uh, only requires, we only requires to use uh, convex polyhedrons as input. So instead, instead of using uh, polyhedrons with seven or eight faces, to have a rough approximation of Euclidean envelope, we can use polyhedrons with more and more faces to have a better approximation to fix the problem. 
and we did experiment. We can see that as the envelope is closer and closer to Hohelian envelope, it takes longer and longer running time because there will be more uh, spaces and more intersections. So if you don't really have to use Hohelian envelope, you don't need to face the problem. So in conclusion, we give you this predicate to check if a triangle is contained in a polyhedral envelope or not. And our method is both exact and efficient. So you don't have to fix the downstream applications to avoid the problems uh, caused by inexactness and inefficiency. And our code is really easy to use. You can use mesh vertices, mesh spaces, and input distance to initialize the envelope. And use this is outside function to give you the exact result of envelope check. The query can be a triangle, an edge, or a point. And we also provide you this two algorithms to give you the exact answer of orientation of intersection point. And they are all inside our GitHub repository. And that's all. Thank you very much. Any questions?